You guys do tools, you do 3D this and that, and then you guys are doing synthetic biology, and yeah. then you're doing like this new generative design stuff. I mean, there was an article in Technology Review about like, oh no, the computers are designing, what will we do? So what's your take on this, this specifically this generative design work you're leading? Okay, so the generative design, and I told you about it because it's totally controversial, but totally exciting. <laughs> so I thought I'd bring something a little bit more provocative because, you know, the things that we all design and are comfortable designing, we all do, and we do it well. But this is interesting. And so the idea was, you know, it, the business I've been in is this one called computer-aided design. And what I would, you know, CAD, and what I would say is the computer has never helped us design anything. Hmm. You know, nobody's ever been helped by the computer. The computer kind of sits there dumbly and then records what we tell it to do. And it would be nice for once to actually have the computer do something. So we got into this thing where we started saying, what do we really want to do as designers and engineers is solve problems. <laughs> and so what if we could start in some way describing our problem to the computer as opposed to, you know, oftentimes now, I got to draw stuff, I got to make geometry, you know, I feel like I'm an 11th grade trigger, not, you know, worthlessly, you know, and instead, what I'm really trying to do is solve a problem. So we did it. And so I brought a bunch of props. And so rather than, the words, because I love objects. <laughs> so here's an example. My little, so this. Whoa. So this is something that was designed entirely by the computer. It's a heat exchanger, a radiator. <laughs> it's a radiator. And what was interesting about this is because it's a design in some way that has two interesting things about it to me. It's almost too complex. So that's just the cross section cut away for a person to design well. Um, and it would be, in the old days, really hard to fabricate. And so this idea was we described to the computer what we wanted it to do. So we said things like, fill this envelope of space, and it needs to have these kind of thermal properties and exchanging fluids as they go by, and here's the pressure and the volume and everything. And this is what popped out of the computer. And so all of a sudden, to me, that was incredibly exciting that we can do this optimization by specifying something to the computer. It's the opposite of designing and modeling. It's really the opposite, which is that, yeah. you know, really you start low level and you sketch out a few ideas. This is you stay at the big idea. What was I trying to do? I was trying to have two fluids pass by each other and one move the heat from one side to the other side. And so this does all kinds of things to optimize the use of space and make it as efficient as possible. And so it's interesting for the first time, instead of, you know, the computer always just sits there. I, I mean, I, I always marvel. We have all this computing power, mm -hmm. you know, almost infinite computing power these days. And the computer just sits there and does nothing until I tell it to do something. Mm -hmm. And then it does that one little thing. And then it sits there again like an obedient little poodle. You know, and it's like, <laughs> why, why isn't the computer doing more for me? When you said that thing about, like, I'm, I'm, I'm it, like, I'm so tired of typing for i equals zero, i is less than whatever, <laughs> yeah. or I'm tired of pulling the Bezier spline out. Exactly. You know, and then you, you, take, you take the little thing and you move it and then you do yeah. it again and then you go and make it and then you go, it's, it's okay. We all do it every day. I do it all the time. Yeah. But it was interesting. And so I brought one other prop because I thought this one was cool because we were working on a swing arm for mm. a motorcycle. Huh. And what we wanted to do was just figure out what would be an optimal design? And so we put in the forces that would be applied to the computer, and we described this is the region it can fill in space. These are the forces that could be applied, and we want to maximize the strength and minimize the weight. And out popped, well, it didn't quite pop out of the computer. <laughs> what it did is it gave a design, and then I 3D printed it. But this is a, a swing arm for a motorcycle. Whoa. And what I thought was particularly interesting is there were two things about it that I thought that were really interesting. One is on one side there's a hole and on the other side there's not a hole. And does anyone know why? Not a test. The chain. Yeah. So it's driven only on one side. And so what amazes me about it is the shape itself and the fact that it looked, you know, kind of biomorphic. So I ran down to the store in Berkeley, where I always go, called the Bone Room. And this thing is a cat pelvis. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a cat pelvis. And it doesn't have a chain drive. It goes on both sides, so it doesn't have a hole on one side. But I thought it was interesting that you know, a 
How many millions of years, Andrew, has this been, have they been working on this design? You know, it's, it's millions and millions of years that we've been working on various designs. And what we're really kind of doing in the computer is simulating like millions of discrete events that ended up with this design. And we end up with a design that's remarkably similar. That's my show and tell. <laughs>